So in this video I will be going over how to disassemble the Krasnogorsk 1 camera and most of this will probably apply to the Krasnogorsk 2 and, and 3 models as well. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that the spring inside is fully unwound. Uh, make sure that there's no wind left because uh, if there was to be wind left in the spring as soon as you took the plate off inside, it would snap. It would all the wind energy would basically be released in an instant, and it would probably just uh, rip itself apart inside. So, first thing you want to do is just uh, take out any film or whatever that's in that's inside. Uh, remove the pressure plate; it just pulls out. Then what you want to do is remove these screws here, which I'm pointing to, this one and these ones here. So they have to come out. So once you've got all of those out, you need to uh, take off the, the film roller in the middle. And to do that, you just need a a smaller flat bladed screwdriver and before you take it off you actually need to mark on it which way it was facing because it needs to face a particular way or else the film doesn't load through it properly so I've, I've already done that uh, so I just scribed a mark along the whole thing so we can put it back together the right way and we're just basically trying to see the holes in the side of the side of it into which we'll place the screwdriver. So we just place the screwdriver inside, and just take the, just loosen the grub screws. You don't have to take them right the way out. So there's one facing that way, and another one facing in this way. Uh, so you should be able to see them in there. And sometimes, uh, if it's not exactly in the right position, you can always uh, just wind the camera, just like, up very, very slightly, just with the just with the button pressed in, just to get it in the right position, so you can remove it. Okay, so once those are out, you should be able to just lift it out. Like that, so that's it lifted out now. So once all the screws are out, to remove this plate inside, uh, you simply just need to pull on it and it comes out. And then make sure the shaft for that roller is clear of the plate and then it comes out. Underneath this plate we have the, the winding ratchet, so when you're winding up the camera and it's making that ratcheting sound, that's what's causing it. Um, and we also have the gear which drives the take-up spindle there. And that take-up spindle gear engages with the gear in here, that's in, in the inside edge of this. And that's the winding gear. Uh, and that must go in the correct way, so I'll just write T on there for top, so it's uh, facing up, uh, and you could take that out. Now, if you wanted to remove this completely, it's it's not going to explode or spring out or anything like that. Uh, it's actually just a sealed unit. Well, there's screws in it, but it's not going to come apart. And all you do to get that out is just remove this uh, by getting a tool in there just to take that off, and then you can just pull it out. And then the whole whole spring unit just comes out. So inside the camera we have the exposure meter needle there, and this exposure meter works uh, as basically a pivoting system. So if you change, I'm changing the exposure using the knob on the outside, uh, and as you can see, it's sort of like just a pivot which moves the 
expose your needle uh, it just sort of compensates for it mechanically uh, and the exposure sensor is actually in the front of the camera and I'll be showing you how to take that off uh, but before I do I can't actually wind up the camera because there's no ratchet in it just now but I'll show you the speed governor working So that's it there, uh, these weights just pull out and as they pull out it causes this, uh, that piece in there just to move outwards against a brake so it doesn't go any faster but it's a very primitive governor system and it's not very stable that's why I want to convert this camera to crystal sync uh, but I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do that I'm still struggling to get a stepper motor driver which can drive a motor fast enough to remove the front of the camera, you need to get this metal plate off uh, and in my case I just uh, got a craft knife underneath it, a very sharp knife and just and it just came off really easily so you need to loosen that then what you need to do is just make sure there's no lens in the way and then you need to loosen the screws there's three screws on the outside of this lens mount you need to take those out So they are just simple grub screws, so you can just get a screwdriver in there and just remove those. Uh, you don't have to take them out completely, just loosen them off. And the one on the bottom. And then just take that ring off, provided that you've removed the screws properly and just set that aside then that will come off. Next what you need to do is remove the screws that are in the front. Uh, now there are there are four of them and one of them had stuff covering it, some sort of plasticky material which I had to sort of just mash away with the screwdriver until I could get through to it. With those four screws loosened the front just pulls off and then uh, the spring-loaded button uh, ends up falling out and going on the floor and this is the button here, it's got a spring on the outside and this plastic piece which goes on the inside like that so what we have in here is a front mechanism and with the front open you can lubricate it as necessary uh, I've already done that, the camera uh, before it lubricated it sounded kind of like a hedge trimmer uh, but it's a bit quieter now I'll show you the mechanism inside it working now as you can see although I've got it set to 25 frames per second it's not exactly rotating at that speed and its speed changes as the spring winds down so for crystal sync, driving it with a stepper motor, I was thinking of somehow getting a drive shaft in through the side of the camera to drive uh, this gear here, which I've got my finger on. Uh, because uh, for for each frame, uh, this, does, this seems to do one revolution. So let's just confirm that. So there's a little notch on the gear here. Now, if I give it half, with it at the top, if I give it half a turn, yeah, if I give it, um, if I give it a full turn, that's uh, one frame. So. If I was to have this camera running at uh, 25 frames per second, I'll need a motor which can somehow drive this at 12.5 revolutions per second. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's how it would work. Because uh, this mirror, uh, for every rotation of this mirror, there's actually two frames uh, being taken. It's not like some of the Ari cameras, which is where it's just like half the 
half the mirror's not there, where it's like, this, this one is actually split in, in, in a way, so it's like, each revolution is two frames. So, if I could somehow get a stepper motor, a NEMA 17, just like this one, to go in through the side there somehow and interface somehow with that shaft, I should be able to convert the camera to crystal sync and it will run exactly at 25 frames per second. So this piece here is a ground glass. That's where the image for the viewfinder is focused, so it's just right on the bottom there. The mirror focuses onto there. And to the side of that we have the CDS cell, which is just a very light sensitive uh, light sensor. It goes into the side of the ground glass, and that's for exposure metering. And those screws on here, I reckon, are for very carefully positioning this prism here for the viewfinder. And that's basically, I think, so that the so that uh, the focus to the film exactly matches up with the focus to the viewfinder, so that what you see in the viewfinder is accurate. Uh, so if I start messing about with these, um, things would look in focus in the viewfinder, but maybe out, out of focus on the actual film, because uh, I've messed about with that, so I'm not going to play about with it. The only issue I've noticed with this camera is that its framing is not exactly accurate, because I framed up just an image of a square on a computer screen, so it looked perfectly framed in the viewfinder, but on the actual film itself it was uh, off to one side a bit, so I'm not sure how I would fix that. Um, it's not a severe problem, but it's uh, it's, it's quite a bit of a miss frame. Uh, it's maybe about um, a fifth to a tenth uh, off to one side from from what's actually on the film, from what you see in the viewfinder. Oh, well, actually, I've had a thought th thought about that a bit more. Um, the ground glass is actually physically fixed in position there. Uh, the ground glass is right right on the bottom there. So if I was to start playing about with this, it's not going to affect the it's not going to affect the focus to the ground glass because that's basically there. So I reckon all that's for is maybe controlling framing in the viewfinder. So if I was to start playing about with those screws I can maybe uh, fix the framing a bit so that what's what the film sees is framed correctly with what this sees, so I may be able to sort that out, I'm not sure. So, a neat way I've thought of to check the focus is, or the framing, without actually putting film through the camera is, I've got this right angle prism here, and I've ground one side of it, just like a ground glass, so basically what I can do is I can just put this inside the camera, where the film goes, uh, and basically just uh, look through it and as you can see, you can see the, the film, the gate there, so I can just look through the side of that and go back and forth between looking through that and looking through the viewfinder and adjusting those screws to try and get the image properly positioned, but uh, the only thing is that I cannot actually put a lens in the camera unless the front is on, and with the front on I can't access those screws, so uh, it's not an ideal situation, so those adjustments were maybe made in the factory uh, with a special front, so there's maybe not much I can do about that. But yes, it's, it's very simple inside, it's easy to work on, so uh, I hope this video was useful to anyone who has, who has this camera and uh, was maybe wanting to lubricate it. Uh, everything's very accessible and if you want to lubricate anything uh, that's you need to put oil there and there. They are just uh, the shafts where uh, there's gears. There's some drive shafts. You, you want to lubricate the end of the governor shaft there, but do not get any on the on the brake, or else it will not work properly. And you just want to lubricate any sort of bearings in there as well. Now a good bit to lubricate is this part of the mechanism. Now that's the film claw in there, which pulls the film through the camera. And it's good to have 
of that well lubricated because that's the bit that makes the most noise. After I lubricated that, the camera was a lot quieter. So, that's how you lubricate that. And this part here, which has just fallen off, uh, always remember that that's meant to go in this shaft here. Uh, so, don't lose that, or else you won't be able to put the camera back together properly.